Hi there, welcome to Longfleet at Home. I'm Susie, I'm the pastor of Longfleet Baptist Church and this is our church online. So today it's the second Sunday in Advent, but it's the first Sunday in the month. So that means we're going to be thinking about the birth of Jesus, but we're also going to be celebrating communion together, taking communion together a little bit later on. Therefore, thinking about the death and resurrection of Jesus. So talking about the whole span, really, of Jesus' life. We've got some Advent candles which we're going to be lighting. Now, as you can see, I'm in Henry the camper van again today and... It's never, it's always a bit dodgy really to be lighting actual candles in a camper van. So health and safety all the way. I have bought some battery operated candles. So we are, <laughs> we're going to light them and I shouldn't have as much difficulty as I had last week. So here we go. This is because this is the second Sunday of Advent. So therefore there are two candles. Look how easy that was. I don't know about you, but I think they look quite convincing. Hmm. So today we're going to be thinking a little bit about decisions. This year in particular, I think there are a lot of decisions that we all have to make when it comes to Christmas, aren't there? Decisions about who we're going to spend Christmas with. Some of those decisions will be easy. Some of those decisions will be hard. Uh, perhaps you might have decided that this year it's more sensible to um, spend Christmas with just by yourself or with a limited, really, really limited number of people because of the restrictions. Or perhaps you are not going to be doing some of the things that you normally would do because of the COVID restrictions similarly. And you've had to make some tough decisions, perhaps. Maybe every year you have to decide whether to work or not. Maybe that decision is taken out of your hands. But some decisions are really quite hard. Other decisions are slightly easier. I did say last week that we're going to be thinking about a different member of my little nativity set every week. And this week, this little fellow whose glue is coming apart a little bit, therefore he keeps dropping his staff. Uh, I think this is meant to represent Joseph. Um, so we are going to be thinking, look, there he is, look, quite cute, huh? Uh, we're going to be thinking about Joseph because we don't hear an awful lot about Joseph um, in the Bible, but he is a key point of a key figure in the nativity story. So let's read together from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter one from verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he'd considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph had quite a lot of decisions to be made, didn't he? He was engaged to Mary and in Jewish customs, um, the engagement would have lasted for a year and it was legally binding. Even just a betrothal and engagement could only be broken by divorce. And so when he finds that Mary is pregnant, he wants to divorce her quietly. He doesn't want her 
uh, to be put to public shame and at risk of public stoning. So he tries to sort of, you know, like, let's let's call it quits. Let's call it a day. Um, perhaps he thought you've obviously got somebody else. Um, let's just let's just call this whole thing off. But as he was considering it, after he'd considered it, we heard from that reading that an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and told him the reality of the situation, that this baby was not a result of Mary being unfaithful to Joseph. This was the result of the Holy Spirit, that she was still a virgin and this was the work of God. And this child that was going to be born would be God's son, God himself, God with us. So what was the decision that Joseph had to make? He had to decide to believe what the angel told him in the dream. He had to decide to believe Mary uh, with what she told him had happened. He had to decide to obey God, to go ahead with the engagement, to go ahead with um, the marriage and to take Mary home as his wife. As we said last week, there must have been talk about them in the village where they lived. There must have been. They wouldn't just automatically, people have assumed, oh, well, this is a virgin birth. This is of God. Amazing. Clap on the back. There must have been a lot of gossip and a lot of talk. But Joseph decided he chose to obey God no matter what other people said. He was going to obey God. That's the choice that is before every single one of us today. You know, Christmas is a time where yeah, we celebrate together if we possibly can. Um, it's a time to celebrate friendship. It's a time to celebrate family. It's a time of giving. But also, it's time to reflect on this story. Do we believe, do you believe that that little baby who was born that first Christmas day was in fact who the angel said he was. God with us. Jesus, the one who came to save us, to rescue us from the mess we get ourselves in. That is the good news. We have to decide, every single one of us has to decide whether we believe it or not. Was Jesus telling the truth when he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Was he telling the truth? And if he was, what are we going to do with that information? If we decide that Jesus was telling the truth, if we decide that Jesus was, in fact, God coming to earth to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sins, What are we going to do with that information this Christmas? Are we going to choose to follow him? Or are we going to choose to just put the toy baby Jesus back in the Christmas box until next year and put off thinking about it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today that you loved us so much that you came to earth as a tiny baby. Lord Jesus, you came to save us from our sins. And Lord, you are still the good news today. But Lord, we do have a decision to make. We have to decide whether to be obedient to you and to follow you and to let you into our lives or whether to turn away from you. And Lord, quite often that's a daily decision in a way because there are so many times where we have to decide whether we're going to do what you want us to do or perhaps what we're being tempted to do. Lord, will you help us to trust you more? Will you help us to find out more about who you are? The Gospels are just so full of what you did and who you are. Help us, Lord, to fall in love with you again this Christmas or maybe even for the first time. Help us, like Joseph, to decide to choose to believe you. Give us your gift of faith, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And as I said, we're going to come to a time of communion now. Uh, Jesus' life wasn't just about his death. It was about the fact that God was coming to be with us in the midst of our mess. And he's still with us today in the midst of whatever we're going through. He is there with us. But when Jesus came to earth and lived among us and taught people about the kingdom of God, this reality where God is king and where we can um, live poor and rich alike, um, sick and well alike, we can live in his kingdom, even as we're here in the midst of our daily lives. We can serve him, we can follow him and enjoy the peace that that brings us and the love and the forgiveness that Jesus brings us. When he died, Jesus went to the cross and he talked about his body being broken for us. He talked about giving his blood, shedding his blood for us. He took on himself all of that sin that we commit on a daily basis and he put it to death. And because God is not constricted by time, that means that that's just as relevant for us today in 2020 as it was back then. So let's come to a time of communion now. The Apostle Paul talks about the Last Supper in 1 Corinthians 11. And he says, on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's give thanks now. Lord, as we each sit here in our own homes with perhaps some bread and some wine or some juice, Lord, we give you thanks that you died in our place. We give you thanks, Lord, that you took our sin and on that cross, in some miraculous way, you swapped it for your righteousness. And so, Lord, as we break this bread together, we remember your sacrifice, the sacrifice you made for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you're alone, then you can take some bread now and eat it. And if you're with somebody else, perhaps you can give the bread, offer the bread to each other, perhaps with some words like this. The body of Christ given for you. We're told in the same way. After supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And we're told that whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. Lord, this feels strange in some ways, remembering your birth and your death and resurrection at the same time. And yet, Lord, we don't want to forget the middle bit. We don't want to forget your life lived amongst us. We don't want to forget, Lord, that you are alive today and you are with us right now. Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate together 
even though we're not physically together, that we can still do so uh, through technology. And Lord, we just pray today that you would go before us and like these little candles here, that you would shine your light into our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been good spending some time with you again, folks. And um, I hope you have a really blessed week. And we'll see you again next week. God bless. <laughs>